Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out alg.cubing.net, or the one tool that I think every single person should be using if they call themselves a cuber. I'm going to be going over what alg.cubing.net is, how to use it, and some of the helpful tips and tricks that you should probably know. First of all, essentially what alg.cubing.net is, is it's a way to simulate any form of an algorithm. And there's a bunch of cool settings in it, but the main idea behind it is that you give it an algorithm and it's able to model it in 3D uh, simulated space. And that means you can see your algorithm on a virtual cube. So the most basic thing in algorithm on that is the ability to put in moves. Now this supports moves in uh, basically official WCA notation. So go ahead and click under the moves section and you can add any form of moves you'd like. As you can see, it takes a second to load, and then it simulates the algorithm on the virtual cube on the left side. This is the playback slider here, and you're able to see all of the moves uh, simulated on the cube. If you go ahead and drag on the cube, you can see that it is able to be moved around, and you can kind of look towards the bottom, look towards the top, and do all of that. This button skips to the front, or the start of the solve, or the algorithm, and this button skips to the end of the solve, or the algorithm. Using these single arrow buttons, you're able to go uh, forward one move or backwards one move. Using play button, it plays the move or it plays the algorithm as if I am doing it. Now above the move section, there is something called a setup. Now if you're trying to simulate some form of solve, the setup would be where you would put the scramble. The setup is literally what is prefixed before the move. So there's nothing really special to it. It's just a section right before the moves that helps you kind of like set up what you're trying to demo. Now underneath the moves, you can select what cube you'd like. So you have everything from two by two to 17 by 17. You also have a one by one. I don't actually know what this does, but uh, I guess it's just for fun. Now, if you go ahead and select a 3x3, you also see that you have the ability to select uh, which stage you're currently on. So, for example, I can select a cross and uh, it will only show the cross. In this case, it's the yellow cross. So, as you can see, the cross is all done. You can also select something like last layer. As you can see, the last layer is highlighted. There are a bunch of cool things here. You have old LPLL, CLS, ELLs. Um, uh, L6E, CMLL, and uh, some other out sets. You also have these options, which basically uh, tell out.cubing.net how to manipulate the setup and the moves. But these are actually a little bit confusing, so I won't be going over them in this tutorial specifically. But if you have any questions about these, ask me down below in a comment section. With the color scheme, you can go ahead and select whether you want a Japanese color scheme, the standard, uh, BOY color scheme, or alternatively, you can enter your own custom color scheme. And the colors, of course, are G, R, O, B, Y, and W. And that corresponds with green, red, orange, blue, yellow, and white. Now, when it comes to playback options right below those settings, you can essentially select how fast the cube is turning. So if I set it up to six times and enter an algorithm, as you can see, if I play it, it goes really fast. But if I set it down to 0.1, the playback is a lot slower. Under playback options, there are also two options named hint stickers and hollow. Essentially what hint stickers does is it shows and hides the stickers behind the cube that are kind of reflecting what is on the parts of the cube that you can't see. And as for hollow, essentially it removes or shows the black outlines. And if you remove them, you can sort of see behind the cube. And this is probably used more commonly when hint stickers is turned off. Personally, I don't really like hollow because uh, it's kind of hard to see, especially with some contrast, but some people might like it better than the hint stickers. Now, finally, there are a bunch of tools in the tool section here. First of all, you have a clear and reset, which is basically exactly what they say they do. When it comes to clear, all it does is it resets to setup and moves. As you can see, setups and moves are gone, but the speed remains the same. Clicking on reset resets everything. This means there's uh, the playback options get reset, the color schemes get reset, and all of that stuff. So as you can see, we're back to one times. When it comes to expand and simplify, like RU prime or something like that, I don't know. And I can put 10 behind this, and it just means to do that sequence 10 times. Now if I hit the expand button, 
it'll literally just take that and repeat it 10 times so that you could see the whole uh, unabbreviated out sequence. Simplify doesn't quite reverse that as, well, it doesn't really know how to reverse it. But if you have something like R prime and then U, Simplify deletes the R and the R prime from in front of the U because, well, it's redundant. You also have some good features like mirror uh, across the M and S axes and invert. I hit the mirror across the M axis, which is uh, the M slice here. I'll just flip it to the from the right side to the left side. So if I get go ahead and hit it, as you can see, it goes right over to the other side. You can also mirror across the S axis, which is the slice layer here. Now what this means is that an F move will become a B prime move. You can also invert an algorithm, which means it basically undoes whatever them that you did. I click invert, it'll literally give me the opposite of that algorithm that I just did. For an advanced feature, you can also put comments uh, throughout your algorithm. So for example, if I have two parts to my algorithm, u r and u prime r prime, I can use a double slash to start a comment. I can, for example, say first part of my algorithm. And these parts are ignored, but they help the user understand basically what they're seeing. And if you click the remove comments button, it'll just simply purge all of the comments from the actual algorithm. You can also render an image of whatever algorithm you did just by hitting this button here. And as you can see, it basically duplicates whatever was on your left side down to an image here. And in order to download it, all you have to do is right click and save image as. Now, when it comes to form link, all you have to do is copy this and whoever clicks on the link will be able to view this exact algorithm that you set up. Now here you also have some examples of uh, some algorithms. So if you go ahead and click world record, you can see it just sets up the world record uh, scramble and solve. You go ahead and click T, that's just the T term. And if you click Sune, of course, Sune is Sune. And it actually writes this in a commutator notation, which if you don't know, I might release a video on that in the, in the future, but essentially it's just demonstrating the capacities of this uh, program. That's about it for today's super quick tutorial on how to use alg.cubing.net. As always, if you have any questions about this program, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll make sure to respond as fast as I can. With that, hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.